Hi, this is James Scarden of Sydney Tech Geek. And today I've got a new video. Of, I'm starting a new set of videos on training for digital cinema technologies. Uh, I call it CTG Training. And um, I'm going to start off pretty simple. It's going to be how to download a DCP. Now, I know a lot of you probably already know quite a bit about this, but there's a number of best practices that I'm going to cover while I'm doing the video. So I recommend you still have a look. And there's also the fact that if you haven't done this before, uh, it's, only going to become, it's only going to become more and more likely that you're going to need to do it. Either, well, there's a lot of people who are uh, you know, sending out trailers, etc., as DCPs for download. And also, in the very near future, you're likely to be asked to download some testing content to make sure that your equipment is going to be compatible with simply um, DCPs as they start to roll out, hopefully, next year. It's taking a little bit longer than we prefer because... Uh, the Hollywood studios and the people behind that organizing it want to make sure it's exactly right before you don't want any dark screens. So please do um, follow this video. It's going to be a screencast. So let's jump into the screencast now and um, let's see if we can learn something. This is James Gardner, the Cine Tech Geek. Before we begin, let's go through a few slides to explain what's going on. So Cine Tech Geek training day, how to download a DCP, including best practices. Now, why download a DCP? Well, the internet's getting faster. The need for download, you know, the need to download trailers and advertisements is getting higher, and it's very um, advantageous to be able to access this content in a very short notice. So, it's a very good reason to learn how to download those um, that content if required. But more importantly, in the near, very near future, you're most likely to be asked to act to download some test files uh, because we're doing the transition or um, from interrupt DCP to SMPTE DCP, it's taking a little bit longer than we hoped because uh, back in, in LA they're wanting to make sure everything is 100% correct and we have uh, as few dark screens as possible. So you may be asked in the very near future to download some test content to make sure that your equipment is compatible with uh, an upgrade to the SMPTE uh, playback type DCP. File formats for DCP downloads. Now a DCP is made up of many files, but when you're doing a download, those files have to be combined into a single file for download, usually a zip file or a tar file. Zip files are more common on PC and Mac, and tar files are usually more commonly made on Linux. So you may have either one of those types of files. Now, I recommend, because PCs are the most common uh, main or uh, management machine you'll see in an exhibition or uh, buyer box to use a tool called 7-zip. Now we'll just quickly jump to that. It's 7-zip dot, uh, sorry, 7-zip.org. Just download the version you need for the type of PC you've got, an uh, operating system you've got of Windows, and then that will give you access to all the types of file formats that you could ever want to uh, extract if you download it on the internet. So we'll show you that in the demonstration. Now, best practices for downloading downloaded DCPs. Now, you want to actually place the DCPs on an NTFS disk or, or USB device over an ext2/3. Now, ext2/3 is the recommended practices uh, for distributing content, but unfortunately, it's nearly impossible to format a drive correctly in that in that format under Windows or Mac. ext2/3 is actually uh, are native to the Linux operating system and most um, DCO players are Linux based but because we cannot make that file system easily uh, on our common comp um, management computers NTFS is the next best thing and all the SMSs or DCI players can read it uh, that type of file uh, file format file formatted disk now if you when you are pl placing that on the disk you want to make sure that you place each DCP in its own directory. So for example, the root of the drive, a name representing the DCP, and the asset map and all the other files would be placed under there. So you would have, for example, D drive, and you'd have different names for different DCPs on that drive. So that's the best practices on how to um, uh, format your drives. If you put DCPs any deeper than that, they may not be read. If you put asset maps directly into the root directory and other DCPs and directories under it, they may not, not work either. They, mo they might, but they may not. This is the best practice and should always work. Now, next thing to do is 
practice because practice allows us to learn so I'm going to go through an example of downloading uh, some test content from the ISDCF website so let's get into that here we are on the ISDCF website and you'll see a button down here test content link so we're going to go there and at the bottom we've got a few files to download we'll pretend we're downloading this one it's actually a tar file this is a good example for, for Windows because tar, Windows can't usually read tar files so we'll just pretend we're doing that and there it goes off and it goes off and downloads it's a big file so it'll take a while so we'll stop that because I've actually already downloaded it and I'll just bring it over so you can have a look here we are so there's a couple of test files I've already downloaded now here's where 7-zip comes in so I've already extracted that file as you can see there and this time I'm going to click on that and use the, the right mouse button the menu button and then I've got my 7-zip options here now 7-zip can do pretty much anything you want but we just want to extract it to a directory in the same folder right so there you go I'll just cancel that for now because I've already done that before and we'll go for example to the one I've already done this is the Centil with markers and there you go there's the actual DCP in there so pretend again I've got a disk um, actually is a disk with some content already on it um, like it was from a distributor and you can see here in the root of the directory we actually have the asset map now this isn't ideal like I said before because we want them in subdirectories so in this case I'd do something like this I would make a new folder I'd call it a name that's adequate like uh, the name that this TCP represents so I'm just going to call it TCP or ridge for now because I'm not sure what it is at this time and then I just get all the files and I drag and drop them into that folder so there we go we've now got a folder with the DCP in it now we can go to the one we downloaded and drop it in there and now we will have two folders and a DCP in each representing that DCP and its contents uh, typically the name of the DCPs would be uh, representative of what the CPL name would be in the DCI software so um, in the DCI software when you in, in, ingest uh, a DCP you get the name of the CPL and that's how you know what it is like um, it's a flat etc the, the naming convention is used in naming that file and usually that's what you would commonly use to name these um, directories as well if, if you knew what that name was and as you can see here I'm using Windows 8.1 which has a very nifty um, copy uh, performance monitor and I'm actually using 8.1 more and more because the I.O. of uh, Windows 8.1 is seems to be considerably better so file copies can happen a little bit faster and when you're actually doing a lot of file copies and moving things around like you may be doing as a, in exhibition now as you're managing your films that's probably worth looking into and you may want to upgrade to 8.1 because of that advantage anyway I hope you enjoyed this video on um, downloading DCPs and how to make them onto drives etc so they should ingest into any DCI player that you have um, thank you for listening and please get back to me with uh, more suggestions if you want other type of training videos and that's James Gardner the Cinematic Geek bye for now